imagine a world where everyone's starving. It's not something we like to think of, but it's Africa's reality. And that's what Arable decided we're going to tackle. The scary part is today's conventional agriculture just isn't the right way of growing produce anymore. It's not as sustainable as it could be. 67% of all fresh water goes towards agriculture. Um, El Nino is coming back, where we're going to run out of water again. Um, you don't want that amount of water then contributed to one division. We've got 11% arable land left, 3% of that is truly fertile. So it's, it's all these problems that are just indicating we need to change how we grow conventional food. And that's, that's just the nature we are in and hopefully we can take that on. In this year alone, various pesticides have caused adverse effects across the globe. With pesticide poisoning killing 20 people and hundreds hospitalized in India, mass dives of bee colonies in Brazil and contamination of drinking water in California. Arable is tackling this problem head on. Uh, we started in a six meter container with a lot of duct tape and we had to prove that this is, this is the right way to go about it. And that's what we did. And now we, we want to scale this and bring other people with us. We, we chose our name very carefully on the fact that we're running out of so much arable land, which is land we can grow on, like fertile land. And by going with arable and buying our technology, you are increasing that in a unique and very uh, technology-driven way. Um, but it's only together that we can actually make an impact on this. It's not just going to be arable the company, but it's the people. That's why we focus so much on culture and bringing, upskilling everyone. You know, this is how we're going to do it. It's together. Um, so. Arable just needs to democratize vertical farming technology, make it more accessible and in a way that it, it works. Um, and that's what we're doing. Vertical farming is still a very new industry with a lot of um, the companies doing it right now, keeping all of their trade secrets from technology to horticultural research, keeping it under lock and key. The environment is very specific and it, it is really a lot of IP. So that's made the horticulture part of it very tricky or intricate. Um, and with regards to the horticulture, we've, we've come, if the two fields have kind of found, they've merged in the sense where um, we've had to test a lot of the technology to understand what is the best for the plants to grow under. So we've done a lot of IP and improvements that way. So what we've also done is we've created a universal, is what we call it, grow environment with regards to humidity, temperature, nutrients and so forth, where we keep we have that as a universal environment and then we've tried to fit as many crops and get to know as many crops and plants in that environment so we can grow the range of our horticultural IP as far as possible. Kind of all started with, we wanted to solve a proper problem in Africa um, and we looked at one of the key problems which was food security. And when we had to decide what's going to be the best way to actually tackle food security, yes, we can grow the produce and we can sell it. Be this one-man show that grows really great, 100% organic produce, but it's not going to make the largest impact. You know? um, so we looked at vertical farming as 100% being the solution. The way to actually make a bigger impact is to develop this technology in such a way that it's a market specific, you know, it works here um, and the people can use it, but it's affordable. We know vertical farming is extremely expensive, um, the technology solution, but the, the problem it's solving is so worthwhile. So we said, okay, well, if, if we design everything from fundamental principles, we can design it in a low cap capex way. We can design it so that it works um, for, for the intended purpose and it's backed by horticulture. I mean, you'd like to buy something that is backed by the thing it's supposed to be growing, you know, in skills. Um, so we said, we want to be, we want to make this technology so that we can then, in the end of the day, sell it to people and equip others um, and upskill them. I mean, what better way to potentially give someone a whole vertical farm in a box and they can start their own little business and grow food for their community in a sustainable and reliable way.
The benefits of vertical farming and arable, the way we implement and grow produce, is obviously we use 95% less water, less land, and just no pesticides. But the, the big win is also the, the logistics save. Um, being able to grow produce, healthy produce, you know, closer to market. Nutritional security is a big part of food security also. Um, and then just being able to equip someone with the means to start a business um, and give them access to this great technology. But we always get the question, okay, but why go so high tech in your solution of vertical farming? Why not just use the greenhouse model? And yes, the greenhouse model is a step in the right direction for food security, but you still have to use pesticides. Yeah, it still uses a ton of land, um, which we don't have a lot of left. You know, only 11% arable land left in, in the world. And you're still very much affected by external climatic conditions. If it gets too hot, it really becomes difficult to manage those greenhouses. Um, and that's, that's where our technology becomes really uh, superior in the sense that it's so um, not influenced by external conditions and you can, take, you can take so many unknowns out of the equation that just makes it really robust. A lot of companies these days are aiming to work towards sustainability but true sustainability is actually on three planes and that's economic, environmental and social and I'm truly proud to be a part of a company that's and being part of the process where we address all three of those aspects of sustainability. What truly makes Arable unique and special is our team. Uh, we are the right team to, to kind of develop this technology in Africa because we've done this from fundamental levels, but it's more than that. It's, it's a company culture approach. Everyone in this team, in this company, is so passionate about what we're doing. Um, and that, that goes a long way. You know, companies break down when company culture starts falling apart and the people don't like working together. Uh, we've got a really nice skilled team that enjoys working together. But it's also more than that. The people are proud to say that they're part of Arable. I mean, I always ask this question um, for anyone who wants to like join our, our team. And I say, if one company, an African company, had to come to you right now and offer you a job, you drop everything, just move. Name that company. And they always struggle. And then you ask them, name me an international company, even an American company, and all the big names come up, you know, like the Teslas, the Microsofts, all those. And we want to be, be that company. We want to be able where you ask someone that's really driven and interested in technology and making a difference, who do you want to work for? Who do you like to work for? And they go, Arable Grow. That's who I want to work for. And you only get that right by having a good company culture and a good team.